I uh, got into the food industry and I started selling food. Then I moved down to California because I loved golf. So I thought, well, I might as well be with somewhere where I can do what I love to do all year long. So I got into medical sales down there. Um, one of my best friends has grown up here, never left, works for Chamberlain Ag. And uh, he got me in contact with the, uh, the principals of this company who are uh, three, three guys live here and one of our main developers lives in uh, Northern California in the Silicon Valley. So he's in the muck of, of what we do, which is uh, apps. So our, our product is an app. It's a data collections app for tree fruit farmers or farmers in general, which is what we've, we're finding to uh, manage their labor. So labor in our industry is the number one issue that every farmer faces. Uh, it's getting incredibly expensive. It's very, very uh, tight. Uh, H-2A programs are awesome, but they're getting really, uh, the H-2A workers are now having the options of choosing where they want to go work. Before it was just whoever was doing it. Everybody's doing it now. So uh, the big thing that we help facilitate is who's doing what, where are they doing it, and why are they doing it? Um, if you can just imagine, uh, when I first moved back up here, I, couldn't, I could not believe that growers the size of a Stemilt or um, you know, 500 acres, 600 acres, 2,000 acres were still accounting for people's time and attendance using pen and paper. They were literally still writing down that Alex Garcia showed up at this ranch to prune this block and getting paid $1.50 for a tree. That data would then make it to the manager's hands, who would have to dissect it. Hopefully, he looked at it, or she. And then that information would then get into the HR office or the local office in the back, in the back of a shop. And then somebody would data enter that information into an Excel sheet. Then that Excel sheet would then eventually make it to whoever's doing payroll. So our product, what it does is it streamlines that entire process. So it makes it so the crew bosses that were before using pen and paper to document everything, they're now using a device, a smartphone, which they have in their pocket already. And downloading our app, we build their account. Uh, we, I do it. Uh, I set up the entire account with the company. So we put in all their ranch information, block information, varieties, people's names, all the information you can think of to run their operation. And then the crew bosses who used to have these clipboards and these pieces of paper are now using QR codes that are on badges to scan people into work. We geofence everything so we know where you clocked people in so people can't get clocked in at home. Somebody can't say, yeah, everybody showed up at 7 AM. Well, no, if you don't scan your badge, you can't clock in. So no more writing stuff down. So we're helping eliminate time theft like you wouldn't believe. Uh, I try not to go into the theft part of things for Field Clock because people will steal from you. Whether they, If they want to steal from you, they'll find a way to steal from you. So I don't really focus on that a lot. But it's cool hearing back from our clients that, you know, God, I didn't know that, you know, Martin used to, he always, on his time cards, I went back and looked, and he would clock in at 7 every day according to what I have on paper. But I just realized that he's the one that takes his kids to school every morning. So he really doesn't show up to about 7, 15, 7, 30. And he's been with us for 10 years. So how much time have I been paying for this one person that says they show up? And it's not his fault. It's typically the manager's fault because they're the ones accounting for the information. So our biggest thing is just trying to help farmers understand and be better connected with their farms, specifically with labor, uh, just trying to help them manage their labor. Um, so we've, uh, we started the company. Uh, well, the, there's four principles of the company. Uh, they started the company in 2015 is when the kind of the idea came about. And it was funny how it came about because one of the owners has about 200 acres of cherries um, just uh, east of the airport. And his wife, which is very typical, does the payroll. So she was just sick of it. She was sick of like, not being able to spend time with her two kids. She has two little boys. And so every summer, June and July, it was like their time was consumed in the orchard. Right? He was making sure the product was being picked. And then she was making sure people were getting paid and the kids were just running around bored, right? Terrorizing the house. So uh, my, one of the principals uh, had a contact with the developer out of Southern California or Northern California. 
and they were driving together and heard this conversation of like, God, I can't stand counting punch tickets. I can't stand doing this data entry. There's got to be something out there. Well, there, is, there are things out there. The biggest thing is they're incredibly hard to use. So the people in the field don't want to use them. So they push back on the owners. And the owners have to throw up their hands and say, well, I'm not going to lose Martin over this app or over this product. I can't lose him. He's my, he's my right-hand person. Um, so what they did is they said, well, let's build, our own, let's build our own product. You're a grower. You know the pressure points. And I'll build it. And I know how to build apps. And I know how to build software. And we'll make it simple. And so that's really how this all came about. And that's probably the best thing that I could ever hear from a client is when I ask them, you know, what made you look at us? And it's like, well, there's a need. I need to figure this out. But there's also the issue of how easy is it? Can my people adapt to it? Can they pick it up quickly? So I speak fluent Spanish so I can connect with the, grow with the growers. And I can also connect with the people doing the, the work, which is the crew bosses scanning and do managing the labor. So that's been able to, to really take us to where, where we're at today. Yeah, smart, devi smart devices, yeah. So uh, we, we launched our product with, uh, with iOS in mind. Um, we're all huge iOS users, Apple. Uh, we think it's the best, quickest. Uh, the, the issue you ran into, that, into with that is people get shell-shocked when you say you've got to use an iPhone. And the growers go, oh my god, those are $1,000 a piece. So, um, so we moved into Android uh, because a lot of people already have Androids. Um, a lot of what we realize is a lot of, our, a lot of the, the growers tend to have iPhones a lot of times, or the upper management. But the people that are actually in the fields, if you want to have them use their device, they typically all have Androids. Um, the beauty that we found is iPhones are really not that expensive anymore. Um, you don't need to have the latest and greatest iPhone to run our app. Our, our app. Uh, iPhone 6 works great. Uh, I have, I've been able to finagle my way into talking to the, some of the, like the Verizons of the world and the US Cellular. They reach out to me and they're like, hey, let, let me write up some, uh, some um, proposals for people that are looking for phones. We can actually give you iPhone 7s for a dollar. So when I bring that kind of stuff up, the grower really goes, it, it really eliminates that whole barrier to entry due to the device. Um, tablets are okay, they're just slow, they're not practical for an orchard. Um, management, like foremen, people that drive around in a truck all day that are moving all over the place, they can, they can be in a comfortable spot, open up their iPad and look at things or, or tablets. But we really, really tell people the best user experience is going to be with an iPhone um, or, an, or, or, or a modern, more up-to-date Android that has a decent amount of memory to be able to, to do the day-to-day. Uh, for me, followers, uh, I've been pushing, I've been, uh, the, the, the principals are not into social media. They, uh, they, don't, they don't really, they don't do it. They don't care for it. They, they just have never had to. They're kind of good old boy mentality. They, they know who they know. That that's how we've been able to grow this. Um, and when I came into the picture, I, I'm a huge social media person, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, specifically for this business. Uh, I'm doing some Instagram now. But uh, I really, I want followers. I need people to share the story, help me spread the word. Um, and so that's, that's a big thing that I, when, when, you know, when you were asking me, like, make sure you have some, because they're going to ask you, what, what, how can we help? Like, what, what are you here for, you know? Um, obviously, the engagement of the community for us is huge. Uh, owners, the principals don't like doing this stuff. They, they do not like being in front of people. They don't like talking. Uh, we're growing very, very rapidly. The client issue for us isn't the problem. It's just, it's, it's, it's just followers, people sharing, spreading the word, so that we can get into other markets, essentially. To be able to keep continuing to, so yeah, I mean, I guess the, to answer your question, we, uh, who wouldn't want more clients, right? We all want more clients. Um, but I more spread the word because you have friends in places that I don't have friends in. So I guess to help us grow the market space further into other states. So we're, we're Washington based. We're here out of East Wenatchee. 90% um, of our clients are in between the Canadian border, Tenasket, all the way down to the Dalles, Oregon is where our 90% of our clients. Uh, we started selling the product in 2017. Uh, April of 2017, so this April will be two years. 
and we've brought on over 100 clients, uh, ranging from Zirkle to a 50-acre client. So that's so we're going really quick. So that's um, kind of a struggle too. Not that I know of. That's not, that's not what we, yeah, our, our, our thing isn't trying to attract people to come work for a Zirkle. It's helping Zirkle manage those people once they get there. So like different industries, you mean? Yeah, yeah so we, we've, we looked at that. Um, we, we actually, uh, they're really close to the, the, like a bunch of different construction companies around here that have, that, that, you know, have a lot of labor. Um, but you, I'm sure you probably would know this, but it, the laws change so much between industries. Uh, we know ag, we know rest break pay calculations, we know adjusted minimum wage calculations, we know when you have to pay people, how you have to pay people, how to calculate that stuff, that's what we do. So getting into like uh, landscaping or things like that where you see a lot of, a lot of people working, um, It'd be a great idea down the road because I think we've, we've done a good job of building a simple app. So that could be scaled. You can build another simple app for another industry. But our, our bread and butter just is, is ag. And it's, it's specifically like tree fruit, hops, blueberries, things like that. Not so much in the row crops because it's very low labor. Uh, usually big machinery covers that. That's a good question. Uh, it really varies. So I. Yes, last week I set up a client that called me and said, hey, I've been looking at you, I've heard about you, when can you set me up? So that took me four hours to get him did set up. Did he say, how did he like, hear about you? Yeah, uh, it's word of mouth. I mean, in this, in this state, in this, in this specific field, it's just massive word of mouth. Um, ag shows, we do the ag shows. Um, saw you there, talked to you, I don't know if you remember me, I'm ready to pull the trigger on this. So the, the cost of acquisition for a client is, it can be really, really cheap, or it's like, I don't even know who you are, somebody told you about us, sweet. Or it can be as, as time consuming as, it took me you know, six months, I'm still working to try to, try to fully, fully land Oval. You know, and they're just really tedious. They're, they're testing multiple uh, programs, and they want to find the best solution for them. So it's, it's, it just totally varies on the client. I've had clients, uh, Star Ranch is one of our big clients. They just, they found us, they did their research, and they were in, and we, we launched. So it's just, it's, it, it varies, which is really interesting. Uh, I don't. I know some buddies that work there on the back end, doing all the installation stuff. But I don't know anybody um, in. So um, they have a guy in Michigan now, Scott Mock. So. Yeah, Michigan's a, a big thing for me. Like I'd love to go there. I would contact my husband works there, so there's. Uh, I'd contact somebody there and see if you can get some contacts from them. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, th I feel like that's we. So one of the struggles we have right now is what do we do next? Right, we have, we're growing crazy fast. We're keeping up with it, which is great. Our product is keeping up with it, which is that's a huge battle is you don't want to overdo it and then bog your system and then people go, hey, your app doesn't work. I can't do my job. Um, so we've, we've done a, a fast growth, but it's been very controlled and I think we've done a pretty good job of that. We haven't lost anybody. Our retention rate's like 98%. So if you jump on, you don't leave, which is, that's a big thing for us. So, but, uh, I want to focus as much as we can on what we know we're good at, which is apples, cherries, hops, blueberries. And everybody always wants to go to California because California is an all year long producing state and there's other varieties, there's almonds, there's all this other stuff that you can get into so your revenue doesn't dip where here it dips, right? Because right now it's our slow season. I mean, our growers are, they're, they probably aren't even working today. So it affects our, it affects our revenue and how much people they hire. Um, so it, but Michigan is attractive to me because it's the second largest apple producer in the state, in the country. So we know apples, we're good at it. So do we go there, do we go to California? Yeah, and, and that's another reason. So California would be attracted to us, attractive to us, uh, again, because California laws come up here. So we already know that if we're compliant here, 99.9% .9 of our, our, how we do things, we, we get it from California. 
So it makes sense to go there, where Michigan might be a little different. But our app is set up, our developer did a phenomenal job of setting, of, of, no, of understanding that, that every, and we want to go international, we don't just want to be in the, sta in, in, in the US. Um, so he, he built the back end of it, so it's, it's customizable to the sense that based on the state. So when you're, when you're, when you're entering all your data, when, when I say you, it's us, I'm, I sit there next with you. Uh, there's, a, there's a spot where there's different places where you have to put specific information about how, what your state laws are, minimum wages. Right? It changes here compared to Oregon, compared to California. Um, do you have to pay overtime? In Washington, we don't yet, but in other places you do. So there's, he's, he's done a good job of building the possibility to get into other states knowing that there's going to be different labor laws. The, one of the biggest reasons why we came up with this was uh, the products that are out there that I compete against, the barrier to entry for them is the cost. So we didn't want cost to be a barrier of entry. So the way we charge people, and it's, we're incredibly transparent about it, if you call any of my competitors, they're going to say, fill out the survey, and then I'll get back to you and tell you how much it's going to cost you to, to do business with us. For us, it's black and white. We have an $1,150 one-time onboarding fee, and that gets you set up. And that gets me four hours of training with your crew people. Always, obviously available afterwards via phone calls, things like that. Um, and then it's $5 per active employee per month. Yeah, we really, yeah, the pricing thing is always a big question amongst the, the team is are we, are, I know we're underpriced. That's a fact. We, we all know that, right? But our whole thing is we, we, we don't have a lot of people working for us, so we don't have a huge expense. So we don't have to charge 18, you know, I've done, we've done so much research. We work directly with payroll companies. So our product in, incorporates or uh, integrates with payroll. So I, I'm, I'm a networker and I talk to these sales reps and I say, what do you guys charge for your onboarding fee? What's your setup fee? What do you guys have? What do you call, what do you charge? Um, the ADPs of the world that are massive, um, they want to integrate with us because they don't have this tool and they don't want to build it. They don't know how to talk to the people doing the actual work. Um, and they range anywhere from $8 per person to $20 a person. So we're at five. We know for a fact that we are in a great spot for growth just by natural increase of due to, and we, we charge the $5 and our whole thing is it's for the, for the storage of data, for the service, uh, for our widget to be able to communicate with somebody uh, if you need some help or some, some sort of assistance in real time. So definitely a lot of room for us in that, that space to, to grow. Definitely that's our, that's our, that's a, a next play for sure. It'll be, a, it'll have to be another human for sure. Another hope, someone like me that can speak, the, the tricky thing is finding the right person that can speak to, I mean, I spend a lot of my time talking to a CFO or a CEO, but I also spend time talking to Miguel, who's the one that does scanning the bins. So it's having that good balance of being able to just get in the muck and you know, work with the people that are doing the work and then also being able to sit in front of a CFO and talk, to, talk numbers. So that's, but that would be, that's the ideal, that's what I want, you know, but it's tricky because do we need that? Our whole thing is to, we, we want to automate everything we want to make it where we don't need a set, you know, 100 Alex Garcias running around. That's expensive. So we want to be able to, um, we, we have a lot of videos, our YouTube, our social media stuff, a lot of videos on how to do stuff. Hey, how, how, do you, how do you train a crew boss? Here's a video on how to train a crew boss. So if I'm not there or you want me there, it's $150 an hour, or you can go to YouTube and watch the video. And then please tell us if it doesn't make sense and we'll tweak it. But we, we try to do as much automation as possible but it's tricky because people like the hand-holding and people really appreciate it, especially farmers. especially farmers. They want you to be there. They want you to be the one that they talk to. They don't want to have to get the phone call. Yeah, we flag certain things that are hot, hot issues for, for growers. Um, a big one is, is the person making minimum wage. So during, I don't know how familiar everybody is, but during piecework jobs, there's a big law that says 
if you're paying somebody to pay to pick a bin of apples, doesn't matter what the cost is, it, are they making at least minimum wage, which is twelve dollars? If you have H two A, it's fifteen oh three. So we have we have a, a tool in the back end that says this person worked this many hours, re, did, did, uh, reduced the breaks, and then here's how much they would have made an hour. If it's less than fifteen or twelve, we adjust it and we red flag it. So the so the, the growers can keep an eye on that stuff. Somebody um, let's say it's an hourly job. Somebody clocks in at six in the morning and doesn't get clocked out until the following six in the morning. Well, that person didn't work 24 hours or 12 hours or whatever it is, we red flag it. So they, they have an idea of, of being able to manage and look for anomalies. Yeah, employees, the doers, the, the, for lack of better terms, just the, the workers, they don't touch the app at all. They just have a badge, that's how they, that's how they exist for Field Clock. So they don't touch anything, they just show up to work. The crew bosses, the people that do all the scanning and clocking people in, things like that, depending on the level of the, the company, if it's a small company, they do have access to the website of things, and that's where they can go edit stuff. So our whole thing is a crew boss, or a ch let's say you're picking, and you're picking cherries. There's usually a gal or a guy that sits in front of a bin, and this is more traditional now. You have 15 pickers, and they have a bucket. They all have a badge. The picker shows up, dumps their bucket, and then the person that's there, the checker, scans their card and says, you just made one bucket. Two, three, four, five, and then all these people come in all day long. Well, right now, they're using punch cards. You know how much theft happens when someone just wants to punch a couple extra holes in the, hole, in the card? Those cards then make it to, to the office. Somebody has to come in after a long day of harvest, has to come in and sit down and count this information, put it on a piece of paper, tally it all up, make sure it makes somewhat sense and then get that into the HR office where then somebody has to put that into payroll to generate a payroll batch to eventually pay the people, right? So our whole process is using a phone. We do all that in real time so you know how much you're picking per hour, who's picking what, who's your best picker, who's your slowest picker, and then that information then makes it to the, to the computer, to the cloud, where then a manager double checks it, make fine tooth combs it, make sure nothing's weird, N nobody picked 2,000 buckets, that's impossible. And then, then when they finalize that data, then payroll gets involved and says, I'm going to run a payroll batch from this date to this date. Whoever worked during these dates is going to get paid. And we do all that information. And depending on what payroll company you work with, we can import that into payroll and get you paid. So payroll's still its own thing. Okay. It's, we're not payroll. We're a data collections company that eliminates pen and paper out of the orchard to streamline everything. Yeah, like I said, just anything to, to, help, to follow us. If you can, please find us on the social media. If you know anybody that is in the ag industry, you know, like having a connection like the Van Doren thing, thinking outside the box and like, hey, you should, you, should, you know, there's probably some synergy between you and these companies over here. Um, any, any of that information that you guys can share, that would be awesome. What's the name of the company again? Field Clock? Field Clock. Yeah. Awesome, thanks. Thank you.